popular religion poses quite a few problems for sophisticated modern minds. With its proclamations of superiority and literal beliefs separating one group of people from another is not what religion or spirituality or faith was ever supposed to be about. Many experts have described a process a person may go through on the road to true spiritual maturity. But the stories collected in my book are an attempt to simplify that information, to light the way for those of us like me who have yet to climb all the steps on the spiritual path. It was the talking donkey that finally blew it for me. Why, in the Old Testament story, was Balaam's donkey able to complain about being beaten using real human words, when down through the ages so many babies and other helpless beings have remained unable to speak up and protect themselves from abuse. I was getting tired of crazy supernatural beliefs. Eventually, I noticed that despite the divinely ordained, absolute standards of right and wrong, Muslims do differ on some moral opinions. At the same time, I noticed that People of all different faiths agree on some general behavior principles. It is not God, religion, or the threat of hell that causes good behavior. I have a solid moral compass built into my own conscience and now make my own moral decisions without the absolute rules laid out by Islam. It was when our parish priest mentioned the difference between animal souls and human souls that I became confused. Until that time, I had never questioned that animals, at least those we keep as pets, had a similar afterlife to humans. While before I had compartmentalized my knowledge of evolution from my religious beliefs, I was now beginning to feel the need to reconcile the two. Wouldn't my former colleagues be surprised to learn what has become of the religion-hating feminists they knew back in 1971? I wish I could tell them more about my faith now, with neither a creed nor an authority figure to show the way to heaven or to scare people with the flames of hell, we listen to the divine within. It is not that we want to leave our churches behind. For our churches provide needed community and rich traditions that bring coherence into people's lives. What we do need to leave behind are the immature manifestations of the popular religious message. We want to admit that anything that divides us one from another, be it our specific religious beliefs or our atheism, is less mature than that which brings us together. It is not through right answers and rigid beliefs about religion that we move towards spiritual truth and fulfillment, but through unity and love.